Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing a little better than I am. If you can tell that I'm talking a little differently today, it's because I have a big honking cold sore on the side of my tongue trying to power through it. But um, we're going to, the show must go on, right? We got to keep on going regardless. And the Seahawks have made a few moves, nothing earth shattering yet. I think pretty much everything so far is going as expected, but this is a good opportunity to take a look at what the team has done and try to get an idea of what the team is about to do. And this video is going to go up earlier than I usually post because quite frankly things are going to start moving very quickly today and tomorrow. By the time you watch this video, the information may have already changed. Um, by the time this video gets uploaded, things may have already changed because we have to get to 53 in pretty short order here. And at this point, we should have all the information we need to make the decisions. So I'm looking for this team to make a lot of cuts in the coming day or two. And it's going to be flying fast. So rather than try to keep up with every single move, I'm going to try to sum up the series of moves this team makes at various points over the next couple days. So let's start with what we know from yesterday. Trey Brown has been put on the PUP list, the physically unable to perform list, which means he is now not going to play for the first four games of the season. First four games, Trey Brown out. So he will not count against the 53-man until he is brought back. So we know we have an open roster spot where he he would typically go, but once he comes back after that four-game period, we're going to have to clear a spot for him, which that should be fine. I already have a pretty good idea of how this is going to go, but Trey Brown not going to be here for the first month. Uh, we also made some cuts or waves or however you want to put it. We waived four guys, I think is the technically correct term. Tight end Cade Brewer, linebacker Aaron Donkor, cornerback Jamison Houston, and running back Ronnie Rivers. Donkor, look for him to come back on the practice squad because of his uh, NFL Europe exemption. Although he he might be hurt, in which case maybe you won't. So don't really know what's going on there, but... He gets the free roster spot, and Cade Brewer could do that as well, potentially, I think. And that gets us to a place where we, we still have a lot of work to do. We still need to shed more than 20 players between now and I believe the deadline is sometime later tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot of activity in the coming hours. And before we get hit with the flurry of moves that are going to be coming, I wanted to offer up my best guess as to what the Seahawks roster and practice squad may look like in 2022 when the season starts. Haven't busted this out in a while, but I think most of you guys are pretty familiar with it. Position by position, we have the 53-man, we have the practice squad, and I'm not listing the cuts here at this point in time because it, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you're not on one of these lists, you got cut, basically, is um, what we're looking at. So... Let's uh, go down the list here and see what we got. So, quarterback, I think is pretty cut and dry. Geno starting, Drew Locke backing him up. Eason is on the practice squad. I think we like him enough for a practice squad spot. So, three quarterbacks, two on the active roster. Running back, uh, Rashad Penny starting, Walker backing him up, DJ and Travis backing them up. And the practice squad is going to be Josh Johnson, Darian Thompson. Wouldn't it surprise me... If Josh Johnson doesn't make the practice squad, just because we didn't really play him in the preseason at all, to my knowledge. So maybe we've just kind of lost interest in him, but for now I do have him here. Wouldn't surprise me if it didn't happen. Um, if Kenneth Walker starts on the PUP, which I think is still somewhat possible, although you would think it would have been done by now, but if that ends up happening... Maybe Darian Thompson gets to have a roster spot for a month. I'm not 100% sure, but that is a possibility that is worth at, at least a moment's of thought. Fullback, Nick Ballore, duh. 
wide receiver, I think we already kind of know how this is going to break out. Metcalf and Lockett starting, Eskridge in the slot, Goodwin and Derek Young rounding out the depth chart. The practice squad, I still have Aaron Fuller here, even though I am obvious for pretty obvious reasons starting to wonder about that. Did not have a very good preseason, and he's been here a while. Maybe we move on. Bo Melton, hopefully he can leak through to the practice squad. Penny Hart, um, I don't think we're going to let him go because we like him. And he does offer some value, but I can't imagine us using a roster spot on him. And then Cade Johnson, I think he can leak through again. And uh, that's the four receivers. So no Freddie Swain, which some people say, hey, we like him and the players like him. So therefore, we're not going to let him go like that. But he's just not doing enough. Okay, uh, tight end. Noah Fant, Will Disley, Colby Parkinson, pretty cut and dry there as well. Mabry on the practice squad. Maybe Cade Brewer takes his spot, but I think Mabry's got the practice squad tight end spot pretty well on lockdown at this point, so I'm going to go with him. Uh, left tackle, I've got Charles Cross and Stone Forsyth. Left guard, I have Philip Haynes, although I think we know that Damian Lewis is going to be taking the left guard spot once he gets back, but I don't think he's going to be back for week one. So the guard spot's just a little bit jumbled right now, but Phil Haynes obviously makes it. Uh, center, Blythe and Kyle Fuller. Right guard, Damian Lewis. Although, by the way, and this is going to be kind of interesting, Damian Lewis, what if he starts on the PUP? We know he's hurt. We hope he can be back soon. But what if they decide he's not going to be ready until game five and they decide to throw him on the PUP? Do we bring back Shamarius Gilmore? Do we promote someone like Lestage? going to be kind of inter interesting. Do we move Fuller back there? Please God, no. Obviously, you could bump Kerhan over, and Kerhan actually played okay at guard in the preseason, but then what do you do at backup right tackle? Do you bump Kyle Fuller out there? So the offensive line depth chart's a little bit all over the place. So we need to see what's going on with Damian Lewis first. Jake Kerhan's versatility probably makes this probably makes this pretty acceptable but if Damian Lewis can't go we're gonna have to find a way to do something a little bit different but uh anyway right tackle Abe Lucas and Jake Kerhan and like I said Jake Kerhan offers versatility he can play some guard and by the way he was actually graded out really well in the preseason when he played guard that was not the case last year so maybe he's advanced significantly all right, um, now we move over to the uh, defensive side of the ball. We've got Al Woods, and we've got Brian Monet backing him up at nose tackle. Pretty good. Nobody on the practice squad. Defensive ends, we have Shelby Harris, Puna Ford, Quentin Jefferson, and Miles Adams, and Hewitt on the practice squad, which means, ladies and gentlemen, we have done it. LJ Collier is no more. Maybe... He holds on to a spot over Miles Adams just because he was a first-round pick, but I got to believe that that stuff is over. I got to believe that the shine is off the apple there. So Shelby Harris, Puna Ford, Miles Adams, Quentin Jefferson, and I think that's going to give you your defensive line. Maybe another guy sneaks in, but I don't know who it would be other than Hewitt, and Hewitt, relatively underwhelming. So I'm going to go with this for now. We'll see how accurate it ends up being. Outside linebacker, we got Daryl Taylor and Uchenna Nwosu starting. Boy A. Mafe and Alton Robinson backing him up. And for now, I have Tyreek Smith here. However, I think there's a very good chance that Tyreek Smith ends up on the PUP, if not the IR. Did not play at all in the preseason. Seems like he's having hip issues. We may end up stashing him on IR so we don't lose him, but we also don't have to spend the roster spot on him. And... Let me say this, if that happens, if Tyreek Smith ends up on the IR, then Onu Giogu, who played really nicely against the Cowboys in that last preseason game, probably sneaks on, so not a bad result. Um, I still think Donkor will make the practice squad because he gets a free spot, but um, if, he, if there's some kind of significant injury going on there, it's possible that that ends up not being the case, but for now I still have him here. Um, inside linebacker, we've got Brooks and Barton starting, 
And I've got V Jones, Vi Jones, and Tanner Muse backing him up. Vi Jones played pretty well in the uh, preseason. And Tanner Muse played well enough in that Cowboys preseason game to make me feel like he made the roster. It doesn't take a whole lot to make the roster as an inside linebacker on the Seahawks right now because of all the injuries, all the stuff that's going on there. So I'm going to say Tanner Muse. Radigan's injured, but I don't think he's going to make the 53-man anyway, mostly because he is injured. Maybe you see us put him on the PUP, and then we maybe make a decision on him after he gets healthy, where we can either demote Tanner Muse to the practice squad or just put Radigan on the practice squad, but for now I have him here. And I'm going to say we put Dublanco on the practice squad as well, just for special team stuff. He played better against the Cowboys, so it's the door is open. So I'm going to say practice squad. Cornerback, this one's tricky as well. You've got uh, Sidney Jones and Artie Burns. I think they're going to start week one. Tariq Woolen and Michael Jackson behind him. Both guys who played really nicely in the preseason. And... I don't think we're going to be carrying a pure outside corner in the um, uh, practice squad at this moment. I don't think Michael Jackson would slip through at this point because he's played so well in the preseason, so I think you got to keep him. At nickel corner, it's a little bit of a jumble because of Trey Brown being on the PUP. Kobe Bryant looks like we're trying to start him at nickel, so I'm going to say he's the starter. Ryan Neal, I look at him as a dime corner, but I'm going to list him here. But regardless, I think he's not going on PUP. If he does, then that makes life a little easier. And then you've got Justin Coleman here at nickel corner as well. Now, obviously Justin Coleman has not played well in the preseason at all. And it seems like he's cooked. But I feel like the Trey Brown injury is going to kind of force him to stick around for a while. I think Coleman sticks just in case Kobe proves completely overwhelmed. And then when Trey Brown gets back, you might see Coleman get cut. That would be my best guess as to how this plays at this point. Now, obviously Trey Brown offers some versatility to play outside corner as well. If he comes back and maybe somebody like Artie Burns isn't working out and you're not ready to put Wool in there, you could put Trey Brown outside, but then you need to keep Coleman. So that's in play as well. But I imagine it's going to shake out some way like that. I think the only reason why Coleman's going to stick is because of the Trey Brown PUP, but I believe he sticks. And then you've got John Reed on the practice squad. Um, if we decide to cut Coleman and bring Reed up from the practice squad instead, I would actually support that, but I don't think that's what this team is going to do yet. I think they're going to try to get four games out of Coleman and then let him go. That's my read right now. Safety. Uh, Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs obviously starting. I, I think that I don't need to really explain that. Backing him up, we've got Josh Jones, who had a great preseason and training camp. I think he's earned his roster spot. Marquise Blair. Um, I, I I feel like the Trey Brown stuff makes it less likely we cut Blair. Because Blair also has some experience. And he actually did fairly decently last year playing nickel corner. So I don't think we want to lose that flexibility just in case Trey Brown doesn't come back well this year. <clears throat> and then we've got Bolden on the practice squad. So hopefully he uh, is a hopefully he's able to come back. I believe we already uh, released him uh, fairly recently. But um, there were quite a few UDFA safeties that we uh, sorted through, and I would be happy with most of them coming back to the practice squad. So just whichever one you like. And uh, special teams, of course, Myers, Dixon, Ott. And uh, real quick while we're here. Special teams, kick returner, I'm going to say DJ Dallas. Punt returner, Eskridge had a pretty good one, but do you want to risk it? I don't know. I'm going to say yes. So Eskridge, punt returner, Dallas, kick returner. And yeah, that's it. We got 54, but that's including Trey Brown, who starts on the PUP. Keep an eye out for a few other players to end up on PUP or IR, like Tyreek Smith especially, just so we can free up a few extra spots. But, uh... That's my roster guess right now. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys disagree. Let me know if you guys feel we're going to go a different way. Do you see any surprise cuts, any surprise keeps? Let me know what you guys got. Um, might post another video later today. Might not. Don't know. 
But uh, yeah, that's my roster. Give me yours.